Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guide video on how to solve inequalities with a Casio Classwiz FX991EX. We are going to be focusing on quadratic inequalities in this video. Now the inequality feature that is on the FX991EX can solve inequalities of degree 2, 3 or 4. So that is quadratic, cubic or even quartic inequalities. Now if you have a linear inequality you can either use the solver in the calculate mode of the FX991EX to find a critical value uh, and then get your inequality from there or you perhaps you can just use a non-calculator method it might just be easier to do so but as I said in this video we're going to be focusing on quadratic inequalities let's take a look at the questions that we've got so find the set of values of x for which, and then we've got two parts here. So for part A, we've got 3x squared plus 14x minus 5 is less than 0. And then part B, we've got x squared minus 9x is greater than or equal to 22. Okay, let's start with part A. Now we are going to go into the menu on the calculator. Then we want to navigate down to option B or press B which is the inequality feature. Now, first of all, we're prompted with the degree of the polynomial that we have. So as I said, in this video, we're just going to be dealing with quadratic inequalities. So degree two, but as you can see, you can select up to four. So three, four for cubic and cortex, if you have one of those to solve. And then we've got uh, four different options here. Now, what we need to do is to match the inequality that we have in the question to one of the four options that we have in the menu here. And you can see that it matches option two here, ax squared plus bx plus c is less than zero. So essentially you're looking at the inequality, the direction of the inequality, and if it is strictly greater than or less than, or if it has an equals to as well. So in this case, option two, and then we're inputting the coefficients that we have for the terms in our inequality. So it is three x squared, plus 14x it's positive by default there and then we need to input negative 5 as a constant quick double check that we've got everything incorrectly and press equals and here we have our set of values for x so we'd read that then as x is greater than negative 5 but less than one third so any x value that falls into that region then is going to satisfy the conditions of this inequality on to part B then, so we've got x squared minus 9x is greater than or equal to 22. Now before we input this into the calculator, we need to do a little bit of rearrangement. If you just think back to that screen when we had all of the inequalities there, 1 to 4, they were all set up to be greater than or less than or less than or equal to 0. So we need to change the inequality that we have here slightly or any that we might encounter that are similar to this one uh, so in this case we are going to subtract 22 from both sides so that the right hand side of this inequality is zero so we would get x squared minus 9x minus 22 is greater than or equal to zero so we need to go back to the start now the quickest way i found to do this is to just press menu again and go around the cycle there might be a quicker way comment below if you know although this is fairly quick to do so once again our polynomial is two and again we're matching the inequality that we have to the option that we have on screen here so in this case it's going to be option three from the menu so option three and you can see in the first instance we've still got the values there that we submitted for part a as we haven't switched our calculator off or reset or done anything since we last inputted something into the inequalities feature uh, now what we can do is we can simply overwrite these with new values if you want or if you're not too happy about that want it cleared out before if you just press ac once that will just reset everything to zero but as i said you can just overwrite them if you prefer now we've got x squared so we need to input this as one x squared and then we've got minus nine x and then minus 22 which is greater than or equal to zero and let's press equals to get our set of values. Now, when I first saw this, I thought this was a slightly unusual way of writing this. I definitely agree with the first part. Let's have a look at that. So we've got X is less than or equal to negative two. 
And then this is a bit of a strange way around uh, when you first encounter it. 11 is less than or equal to x. Now, probably it would be a better way around to say, and certainly we can write our answer as, x is greater than or equal to 11, just flipping that inequality the other way around. Now, it may just be something to do with the way that the calculator processes the information and produces the results. You can see it modelled at the top there that we've got x is less than or equal to a, which is presumably our first critical value that we've got there, and then b is less than or equal to x. So it's just the way the calculator works it out. Provided we acknowledge that and, and recognise what it's showing, then we can get a set of values that is relevant to us. You might want to prefer, as I do, to re rewrite that second one as x is greater than or equal to 11. I think it makes just a little bit more sense that way round. Moving on then to a slightly more in-depth question using inequalities, let's take a look at this question. So we've got the equation x squared plus k minus 2x, so the coefficient of the x term there is k minus 2, plus 3 minus 4k, so our constant is 3 minus 4k equals 0, where k is a constant and it has two distinct roots, so the equation that we have there has two distinct real roots and we've got to show that k satisfies and then we've got an inequality set up here k squared plus 12k minus 8 is greater than 0 and then we've got to find the set of possible values of k so a little bit more work to do with this question but we are going to be using the inequality feature to help us out now the first and probably most important thing to recognize with this question here is uh, this bit where it says that the equation has two distinct real roots. Now, what we should know is that if an equation has two distinct real roots, then the discriminant of that equation is going to be greater than zero. So it's going to be a positive discriminant. And we're going to use that uh, to help us to form the inequality there the, in part A that is asked us to show that K satisfies. So this is essentially a little bit of non-calculator setup work to show that we need to show all the steps if this was in the exam. So let's just have a look how we would do that. Well, the discriminant could be set up as a B squared minus 4AC is greater than zero if it has two distinct real roots. So the discriminant there, B squared minus 4AC, is greater than zero uh, when we have the two distinct real roots as it's told us that we, this equation has. So let's fill in what we have from the equation. Well, our b is the coefficient in front of the x term, which in this example is k minus two. So it's that whole term that's within the bracket, within the parentheses there. So the first part would be set up as k minus two all squared. So in a square bracket, and then we've got minus, and then four as part of the discriminant, times, and then we've got a, which is the coefficient of the x squared term. Well, the coefficient of that is one. We've just got x squared. So it's minus four times one, and then multiply by c, which is the constant. Well, a c, once again, we've got a term which is in brackets, in parentheses. It's three minus four K. So altogether it's K minus two all squared minus four times one times three minus four K. And that's got to be greater than zero for this to have two distinct real roots. Okay, so looks a little bit complex at the moment, but what we're going to do is to expand that and simplify it. And hopefully, it will give us the inequality that we have already shown in part A. So firstly, we're going to expand the square bracket. So if we expanded that, we would get k squared minus 4k and then plus 4. And then looking at the second sets of terms that we've got there, um, minus 4 times 1. Again, that's just negative 4, isn't it? And then we're thinking about negative 4 times. Well, let's do these two terms in the bracket separately. Um, minus 4 times positive 3, that's going to give us minus 12. Minus 12 as a number there. And then minus 4 times minus 4k. We've got two negatives multiplying together there. So we're going to have a positive a product from that. So it's plus 16k. So 4 times 4 gives us 16k. 
And let's do a little bit of simplification uh, with that. So we've got K squared at the front there. We have a minus 4K plus 16K. Put the K terms together. That gives us plus 12K. And then we've got plus 4, minus 12. That gives us minus 8 altogether. That's all greater than 0. And there we have the inequality that was shown in part A. So we've got enough evidence there to show that K satisfies that inequality. Okay, part B, this is where the calculator comes back in. Uh, we're going to find a set of possible values of K. And you can see there that we've got a quadratic inequality. In this case, it's obviously in terms of K. The calculator works in terms of X, but we're just going to substitute that in temporarily uh, just while we use the calculator. Um, and the re results that we get for X are obviously going to be the results that we would have for K. So let's input that. So once again, I find it just easiest to just to press menu and go back. Select inequality again. Once again, it's a quadratic, so polynomial degree of two. And then we want to select the option which matches our inequality. Well, in this case, it's option one. AX squared plus BX plus C is greater than zero. And once again, we've got the coefficients from the previous question that we answered still in here let's clear them out press ac so we've got a fresh start here so it's 1x squared to represent 1k squared plus 12x and then minus 8 and that is greater than 0 okay and here we have our values for x now we've got third values this time so let's have a look so we've got x is less than minus 6 minus 2 root 11 and then our other critical value that we have over here. Now, remember this is sort of slightly strange way around. Um, I prefer to read this as X is greater than, and then we've got minus six, a negative six, plus two square root 11. So there we have a possible set of values in third form. Now, if you did want the decimal equivalent of these, if you press SD at this point, then we get the decimal equivalents. Now, what's slightly missing here, obviously, is that you don't have the inequality right next to the value, but you can see the little model that we've got at the top there. So X is less than A, and we know that A is minus 12.6 to one decimal place. And then we've got B is less than X. Remember, we could say that as X is greater than B, B being 0.63, let's say to two decimal places. So just SD there, if you want the decimal equivalents, provided you follow the model there, you're going to get the right set of uh, possible values. And so remember that it's not X that we want to write that final answer as we want to write it as K. We're going to go for, as a final answer, actually the third terms because they are exact. And so, so let's just press SD and go back to those. So we know that K is less than minus six minus two root 11. That was the minus 12.63 and so on. And then we also know that X is greater than minus six plus two square root 11. And that was the 0 0.63 result on there. And there we've got a set of values. So there we go, how we can use the inequality feature with these quadratic inequalities. So we did two sort of straightforward questions there. And then one question, which is quite common, which involves using the discriminant and then finding a set of values or relevant values or possible values for K, uh, for which that is true. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time on The Calculator Guide.